Hi, welcome back to another Alchemist Chemistry video. This video is going to aim to talk about diffusion experiments. And as part of this video, my key objectives are to one, define what diffusion is, and then two, to explain some key experimental examples in both aqueous and gaseous conditions. Right guys, just before I get started, I just want to say I hope this video and other videos on this channel help to support your understanding and learning of chemistry. If you do find this video useful, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe, or ring the bell to keep notified of our ongoing content. Your support really helps the channel and is really appreciated, so thank you so much in advance. So without further ado guys, here we go, the definition of diffusion in a chemical context. It is the random and passive movement of particles or molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration along a concentration gradient until evenly distributed, until those molecules are evenly distributed. This is the best definition of diffusion in a chemical context. Now I want to look at diffusion in a little more detail. If I spray this unbranded aerosol can, the fragrance molecules are expelled at high speed into the room, traveling at high velocity, those molecules themselves. But it will take some time for that fragrance and those molecules to reach somebody else on the other side of the room and their olfactory center to smell that fragrance. And so it would seem like the molecules aren't diffusing at high speed when actually they are. So why is it taking so long for those molecules to arrive at the person on the other side of the room? What's the delay? Well, the answer is a phenomenon known as Brownian motion, which I'm going to expand upon now. Brownian motion is named after the English botanist, Robert Brown, who noticed that pollen seeds suspended in water move in a very irregular manner. Incredibly, this led to Einstein proposing that tiny visible particles can be deflected by invisible atoms, bombarding them and causing them to jiggle around erratically. His 1905 paper added great weight to the argument that atoms existed in the first place. So Brownian motion may well have led to our understanding of atoms. So going back to our earlier example, the fragrance particles being sprayed out from the aerosol can are actually colliding with molecules in the air. And that's changing their direction of travel as stated here. That means that it's taking them longer to progress to the location where the person's standing to breathe in those fragrance particles, uh, have them interact with their olfactory senses and to smell the fragrance. Okay, so our first experimental example is the dissolving of purple crystals of potassium manganate 7 in either cold or warm water and the effect that has on the rate of diffusion. In the cold water environment, the purple crystal dissolves more slowly and the speed and rate of diffusion also appears to be much slower. That's because at the lower temperature, there is less thermal energy. That means there's less kinetic energy, kinetic energy being the energy of motion. This will slow down the speed of dissolving of the crystal, but also it means that the potassium and manganate ions will be traveling at a lower speed and diffusing through the water at a lower speed. So the appearance of the water would turn more purple much more slowly over time. On the other hand, in the hot water environment, the purple crystal appears to be dissolving much more quickly, much more readily, and the speed of the diffusing particles also seems to be much higher as they spread out quickly until evenly distributed throughout the water itself. This is because at higher temperature there is more thermal energy, but therefore also more kinetic energy, more energy of motion. That's aiding in the diffusing of the crystal, but it's also speeding up the motion of the potassium and manganate ions, which produce that purple color, which are traveling at high speed throughout the water, producing this purple solution much more rapidly. Our second diffusion experiment example will look at the diffusion of a gas, a colored gas to be specific. 
The example requires the use of liquid bromine, which is a volatile liquid which will evaporate easily at room temperature, producing gaseous molecules. These brown or orange fumes of bromine will fill this sealed gas jar at the base. Note that there is a slip of glass separating this gas jar from a second gas jar filled with nothing but air. Now then, once that slip of glass is removed, the bromine gas molecules will be allowed to diffuse upwards throughout both gas jars until they become evenly distributed amongst the molecules in air. And so the appearance of this entire system will be pretty much homogeneous orangey brown as the bromine molecules diffuse to become evenly distributed amongst the molecules in air. It's a nice visual example of diffusion in gases. Our third example is a classic teacher demonstration of the diffusion of gases. It involves taking a cotton wool bud soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid and placing it into a sealable gas diffusion tube. On the other side of that tube, you place a cotton wool bud soaked in concentrated ammonia solution. Both the HCl and the NH3 are highly volatile liquids and therefore they will evaporate readily to produce gaseous molecules of hydrogen chloride and gaseous molecules of ammonia. They then diffuse along this diffusion tube towards each other. Where they meet, they form a smoky ring appearance. This is actually a solid fine powder of a product of this acid-base reaction, which is ammonium chloride salt, NH4Cl solid. But it appears to look like a smoky white ring where the two reactants have met. So if we inspect this result more closely, something may stand out to you. It would appear to be the case that the hydrogen chloride molecules diffuse a shorter distance relative to the ammonia molecules in the same amount of time. Now, what could be accounting for that? It turns out that the hydrogen chloride molecules are simply larger than the ammonia molecules. If we look at the composition of a hydrogen chloride molecule, we find that it has one hydrogen atom covalently bonded to one chlorine atom. The relative atomic mass of hydrogen from the periodic table is one. The relative atomic mass of chlorine quoted in the periodic table is 35.5. So therefore the relative formula mass of the entire molecule, the sum of those values, is 36.5. It turns out that hydrogen chloride molecules have a larger relative mass than ammonia molecules and will therefore diffuse and travel more slowly. Perhaps a good analogy here would be imagining a very athletic, reasonably small statured runner racing against a less athletic, much larger runner, maybe a track runner versus a sumo wrestler, for example. Who's going to win that race? The smaller, more athletic runner will always win that race. The same applies to molecules with different relative masses. To prove the point, let's look at the ammonia molecule now. What you can see is ammonia is comprised of one nitrogen atom covalently bonded to three hydrogen atoms. The relative atomic mass of hydrogen is still one. The relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14. So 14 plus three is a total relative formula mass of 17, much smaller than the relative mass of the hydrogen chloride molecules. Therefore, the ammonia molecules will be traveling more quickly and diffusing more quickly along the tube due to their smaller relative mass. Right guys, we are almost there. Only one example left to look at, and it's a really nice one. This final example is looking at the dissolving and diffusing of lead nitrate crystals and potassium iodide crystals in a large water trough. Both the lead nitrate and potassium iodide solids are soluble in water. This time, it appears to be the case that the lead ions have diffused a shorter distance comparative to the iodide ions in the time provided for the experiment. Now, when these two reactants meet, they form a beautiful yellow sparkling solid of lead iodide crystals and they would look like this. So if you think back to the previous example we've just seen you may already have a good idea 
as to why the lead ions are diffusing more slowly than the iodide ions through the water. And if I give you a second to consider it, you may well beat me to the reveal. Think you got it? Let's find out. The lead ions, drum roll please, have the larger relative mass of the two ions present. So lead ions have a relative mass of 207 from the predictable, they're a type mass, their relative atomic mass is 207. That's quite a large relative mass. So they will be traveling more slowly through the water. Comparatively, the iodide ions have a much smaller relative mass compared to the lead ions. Their relative atomic mass is only 127. So they will be traveling more quickly through the water, diffusing more quickly through the water compared to the heavier lead ions. That's it folks, that concludes this video on diffusion. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if you found this video useful, insightful or helpful, then please do give it a thumbs up like to help the channel and maybe check out some of the other videos provided and I'll speak to you guys next time. Thanks very much.